Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're going to talk about key features of functions. Yes, get excited. We're going to tell you data in graph or table form, and you're going to tell me the cool stuff about it. So my suggestion here is start by making a table to see if we can identify multiple ways to look at this. So it's going quite a ways here. We can see negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it doesn't look like it's on every value, so we'll just kind of check along here. Negative 8 hits a nice negative 4. Then the next spot we have negative 7 hitting at negative 3. My next spot right here is negative 6, 0. And then negative 5, I should just write a couple of these. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 4. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And yes, I know it's super fun to count all these points, but it might make your life much easier. 1, 2, 3, negative 3 is going to get me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 2 is 2. Negative 1, 1, 0 is back up to 2. I'm going to make a second column here. to do the positive ones here. And it was zero, fell in with the negatives. So one is up here at one, two, three, four, five. And then two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then three is one, two, three, four and a halfy. So yeah, one, two, three, four and a halfy. That's its technical term. Okay, feel free to use it. 4, 0, much easier to say, 5, negative 2, and then 6 is at negative 1. Okay, whew, that took forever, but we made it. First, state the y-intercepts. So, ways to look at this visually. Here's my y-axis. Where is it hitting? Bam, right there at the value of 2. Okay, now, if you're blessed with a table instead, we can see at that point the x value is 0. So you come to your table and you find the 0, 2. Okay? Either way, you can do it. Next, state the x-intercepts of the functions. And then what is an alternative name we give the x-intercepts? Okay, so starting with where does the thing hit 0? It hits 0, we can see, let's see, what do we have here? Right way over here at negative 6, right, there's 1, and over here. So we would say the x-intercepts are negative 6 and positive 4. And since it was where it hit 0, the y value being 0, we also call these zeros, you'll hear them be called roots, okay? So again, if you're looking at the table version of it, you're now looking where the y value was 0. All right, determine. On the interval of negative 1 to 2, so I'm going to get a new color, and I'm going to draw negative 1, and I'm going to draw x, I think it was negative, positive 2. As I look at that chunk, visually, I can see that's going up. So up is increasing. All right, let's say it's a table. Negative 1 is down here, up to 2. So I can see, okay, 1, 2, 5, 8. Those values are increasing. So yes, still increasing. Reasoning. How can you tell? You're going to say y values. increased. Okay. All right. More questions. And I copied the graph over for us. D. For what interval of f of x is greater than 0? So remember first, f of x really means our y values. Where is y bigger than 0? Well, here, right on the axes, is where it's greater than 0. So you can see, okay, 
here we go. There and there. Those are my two zeros I just found, correct? So I'm going to say the negative 6 and the 4. And I'm going to use interval notation. Okay, and we've got the negative 6 to 4. We're going to use round brackets because at 6 and 4, the values are 0. And we're not looking for where it includes 0. We're looking for where it is bigger than. So you want to say right above the negative 6. All right, E, state all x coordinates of the relative max or mins. Now, relative means in a little section. Think of it in terms of the county fairs and the state fairs. You go to your county fair first, you win for best apple pie, wonderful, so proud of you, blue ribbon. And then you win, You all the winners come to the state fair. Okay, and then we'll have the next one. But there can be more than just one relative min or max. So starting with the relative mins, I'm just going to look along here. I've got a dip right here, it looped down. So we're going to say, okay, x equals negative 1. And we're going to look again, keep going. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can see at 5, there is a relative min. Relative max, that's where it's going up high. So 1, 2, 3, 4, up here, negative 4. And up here at 2. So now I was talking about that we had the relative mins and the relative maxes. And that's the county fair winner. All those winners then go to the state fair and duke it out there. And the best apple pie of all the apple pies, well, that's the absolute winner. That's the state winner. So we have the absolute max and the absolute min. That's the biggest and the smallest, okay? Now, look at the values of the wording here. This is where life just gets extra fun. In part E, they were very, very specific and said state the x-coordinates. In F, they ask what are the absolute max and min values of the function? And then where do they occur? So to answer the questions in the order that they want, the absolute maximum is the biggest value. The absolute max is the top of this mountain. So you're going to state that the absolute max is equal to, that. i got to count it again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You have your table right there, so hopefully you looked at that. It occurred at x equals 2. Okay? Noticing the difference in the questions. So then the absolute min is this value right here. Even though it wasn't a relative, because we did not know what was going on over here in the part of the graph that does not show. In this set of competitors, this is the smallest value. So negative 1, 2, 3, negative 4, okay? So the absolute min is negative 4, and it occurs at x equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so we're going to go back. I just have to go back to the other slide. When it says where does something occur, that's the x value. What is that? That's the y value. So you want to make sure you write those in there. All right, domain and range. We've basically looked at these already because we've been answering the questions. So domain, remember, is your x values. Range is your y values, alphabetical order for both of them. Okay, so my domain is going to be, and I just used the wrong bracket, we have to include that negative 8. So you're going to use the square bracket, and that goes all the way up to 6. So reading right across, and then my range goes the bottom there. We just said the absolute min was negative 4, and the absolute max was positive 8. We're going to hold off on question H right now, and we're going to look here. You now have a beautiful example for you to do here. Oh, so pretty. 
so lovely. The first thing you have to do is graph this, okay? Remember the absolute value you can find in the book, or you can just type in the ABS in the calculator, and that will graph that for you. And then you're going to go through and try the questions. Notice in D now, it changes from where ours before did not have the or equal to. This one does, so it's going to change those round brackets to square brackets, okay? So you'll work your way. I know you're doing awesome. Feel free to pause the video and you'll show that to me next class. And now we have one more example to do. In this one, they gave me the table. If it helps you to be visual, give it a sketch. Now, do we know every single value in between negative 6 and 13? No. Do we know every single value between negative 6 and 13 exist? Yes. And the reason we know that is because it said it was continuous. So when you see that vocab word, at this point in your career, the easiest way to remember that is that if I were to draw this curve, I would not have to pick up my pencil. Okay, I could draw just looping up and down. Who knows where it's going? We can see the, all those values. So first, state the interval for which f of x is less than 0. So you can see you've got a 0 here and a zero here. Less than that means negative values. So the interval for which this is going to happen is going to be negative one up to eight. We just are saying less than, so we're going to use round brackets on that, okay? The values in between those zeros were all negative. State the intervals over which f of x is increasing. Again, visually it might be easier to see if you had done a sketch, but 5 to 0 goes down. 0 to negative 2 goes down more. Negative 2 to 4 goes down. Here, look, this is where I've been, sorry. Still going down. Now, negative 4 to negative 1, I've started to go up. Okay, so I'm going to start the x value. That happened starting at 3. Negative 1 to 0, that's positive. 0 to 3. That's positive. Oops, started to go back down. So that means at 9, we're done here. All right, you guys have a great night, and I'll see you in the morning.